peace plan really is something that organizes something that we are very familiar with and puts it in a thing, in a, a simple acrostic that we can remember and, uh, and carry out. In fact, mission endeavors of variety of denominations, whether Baptist, Methodist, uh, you know, Presbyterian, it doesn't matter, for years, there have always been denominational agencies and boards. There have been other things like Samaritan's Purse, Operation Christmas Child, uh, you know, World Vision. There are all kinds of organizations that do good things around the world. But in even in one of the uh, strongest Protestant denominations in the country that sends out thousands of missionaries in over 130-something countries of the world, and all of which do a great job, still fall short of carrying out what Jesus said. In fact, if you have your, your Bibles there, Matthew chapter 28, uh, verse 19, it's on page 694. If you're looking into the, uh, the Bibles we passed out, page 694. This is something, I, a passage all of us are familiar with. And yet I think it has to take preeminence in, in how we rethink and how we recalibrate what we're here for, how we're going to do it, and when. In Matthew 28, verse 19, we have what is called the Great Commission. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. We are also encouraged in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that, uh, look, we've we got to take care of the things around us, but we have to go into all of the world as well. And it hit me one day, as I was thinking through this, in fact, a number of years ago, is that this, this was not a multiple choice question. I thought, well, okay, this idea of, of, of being here and doing good things, and we'll pass out turkeys at Thanksgiving, we'll do Operation Christmas Child and send boxes, and we'll do those sort of nice things, all of which is good. All of which is good. But it dawned on me that that's part of what Jesus asked us to do, and the other part wasn't an option. So it hit me. You mean, you mean to tell me that when Jesus said that I am to go into all of the world, teaching them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, that he potentially meant me? Couldn't I kind of put that off on someone else? Can I pay someone else's way? Well, maybe you can. But however we do it, it's, it's not an option. And the difference between what denominational hierarchy, and I'll say that in the most positive sense, you know, hierarchy doesn't have to be a negative, but sometimes it is. But within the denomination, denominational hierarchy of a variety of denominations, there's a process. Because when they put that much time and they put that kind of money into a person or a couple or a family, to go learn the language, to go change their lifestyle into another country, uh, they have invested a lot of time into their life. And that process takes years, and it takes money. And as a result, even the greatest missionary movements of our world and in history, only a small percentage actually go. The difference between that in the, and, and the peace plan, because missions is not new, Going to all of the world is not new. But the difference the peace plan makes is the focus is on you and me. Not boards, not agencies, not denominational hierarchy, all of which is good. I'm not talking bad about that. Absolutely, absolutely good. But one day it hits us that I'm responsible. I am just as responsible for going unto all nations as any other person who would go. And what has happened with the peace plan is that it has unleashed the, the common folk in every church, regardless of your job, regardless of your interest, regardless of your training, and said, you know, we don't need all professionals. We need people to lead, to guide, to equip. We need certain people who really have been there, done that. But as a whole, Jesus didn't say, when you get all trained up, when you get five degrees behind your name, then I want you to go. He just said, go. I thought it was really interesting that he took fishermen and uh, used them to change the world. 
Now, that's not that education is bad, been there, done that. But the truth is, when God's people, you and me, or the 50 people who met in that tent out in the middle of nowhere, get the idea that I really can. I really can go into all the world, just me and this church. It unleashed thousands and thousands of people through churches all over the world. And the peace movement has is brought into this great movement, and it is a movement of all churches, of all denominations, of all types, from all countries of the world, doing missions as Jesus said do it, and that's the difference. And I think the other thing we have to see, and I, that's why in your, in your insert there, I put what the uh, global giants are, and I'm not going to keep going back to those, that's why I gave that to you. And then, of course, you see the peace acrostic, and that's what peace is all about. And you can look back and forth to that and kind of glean from it, and I hope you'll take it home and pray. Because my prayer is that somehow God's going to really bring home to us that it's not just about how we do church here. It's are we doing church out there. You see, Sunday, Sunday really ought to be a day of celebration of what's already gone on during the week. In fact, in the early church when they gathered, they shared a meal together, they shared the Lord's Supper, they listened to the apostles' teaching, they celebrated. But I think what has happened in many, and this is stereotypical perhaps, and categorically perhaps it can all wash, but I've seen enough churches, I've been in enough countries of the world to tell you that for most people, church is about what we can do in these walls for us. Now, it's not wrong to have a kids' ministry, absolutely not. It's not wrong to have something to do with youth or have music or have this or have that. Those are all good things. But when it gets to the point that we have become really concerned with, well, you know, let's, let's have this event. Let's do this activity and make all of us feel good and do our little thing. And then what really becomes major is that we become overly concerned about what carpet we get, what color the walls are. I mean, anybody comes to this church and worry about the color of the walls, they're freaked out by the time they get to the front door, you know, <laughs> orange, yellow. So we kind of up front tell them we don't care about color. I mean, I don't mean it that way. I mean, we do like the color. <laughs> Boy, I screwed that up. <laughs> so th the idea is we often turn in on ourselves, And in fact, being a part of a new church plant, before I knew it and had to make a mid-course correction, before I knew it, what became a new church start, a 